Hello everyone, we are so excited to be here today to welcome you to a pretty cool virtual hands-on workshop program which will, over four months, cover four different subjects, flowers to wear, bridal bouquets, sympathy work, and tropical nouveau designs with a fabulous team of five instructors, Francoise, Anya Norwood, Brenna Kwan, and Sue Tabel Yamaguchi and myself. We are approaching each of the subjects with a fresh look, post-COVID. Colin? Okay, so anyway, <laughs> it, it's going to get us better into our craft with relevance to match the spirit of our time. Today, also, we'll be presenting a short... <laughs> oh my gosh. We'll be presenting a short review session on the elements and principles of design, which, by the way, is the building block to artful composition. Floristry, after all, is one of the most beautiful art form that requires further cultivation to the world. So, we all probably, let's just say, we all probably started arranging flowers as a fun activity at the onset. A hobby turned into work, or some of you may have started to work in the flower shop to begin a new career. But as you pursue the continued repetition of the process of arranging, you probably started to yearn for some new ideas, new directions maybe, new techniques to add to make it more exciting, more expansive, and then start wondering, so what makes the ultimate excellence? If you are entering a flower show or deciding to compete, we start to wonder, how can I get better at this? Learning to craft that excellence, to build it into your own work, that which raises a bar in your approach to floristry. So learning how to build color, textural, 
linear excellence, visual asymmetrical balance, perfect proportion, improves the outcome of the design potentially. 150% or more. The success of a design is all that built in beautifully, knowingly, it is an educated, what then becomes an intuitive way that you're able to communicate the highest level of beauty through the medium of flowers. As a painter with his paint or a sculptor with his stone. The craftsmanship and the method of delivery with an educated eye of the artist tells a story so poignantly. We're able to create tension. It's an artist's term for an effect, an emotion that can be felt through beautifully crafted art. It reaches the viewer's heart and soul, learning how to tell your flower story so that it can be felt from the other side. This comes from the in-depth internalized knowledge and instinct that we learn from the study of the elements and principles of design. This is exciting that we could be sharing this with you. But we're gonna present this segment in this orientation session to get your mind thinking, to prepare for that way of thinking. We will make sure that by the end of this workshop series, you will know that elements and principles of design like the back of your hand. So let's first get the nuts and bolts of this workshop series started. A little bit of housekeeping if you can, for all of you that are signed up and registered for this class. What we hope to accomplish with you and for you, we are going to help you learn to create with the highest level of guidance and direction. We're here, <laughs> we're both here for you, each one of the class. We will share with you tips and tricks, mechanics and techniques, processes and methods, which will help you to create some new exciting works that will thrill you. We place great imp importance on staying in the forefront of creative floristry. That's why we call it the fresh look. We want to expose you to some new varieties of flowers and greens too, and to new supplies and hard goods that are available and of course, to show you how best to use them. This workshop hopefully will kickstart you into a world of creative potential within you to grow leaps and bounds, that it will bring you confidence to do more, to create what you thought were beyond your former capabilities. We just want to help you upgrade. That's what it's all about. So what, what, what I want to do is to start talking about the very first um, workshop that we, that's gonna launch on Sunday with Francoise Weeks. And we were trying to get Francoise on here, but oh, we were having some problem like we did before. So we're launching this program this Sunday. And so Francoise will be here March 21st in the first in the <coughs> series, Fresh Look at Flowers to Wear with Francoise Weeks. And I'll be te we'll be team teaching. Each workshop in this series starts with a Sunday demo lecture with our two instructors working, teaching side by side simultaneously. It is a two hour plus session. We will be covering everything from creative boutonniere, corsage, to flower crown, floral jewelry between the two of us. We each will bring our different looks and approach in our collections so that you find much diversity from which you can learn and begin to craft your own suitable style for your hands-on project. This session is recorded, so it will be available for you to watch repeated times to catch additional details that you want to review. As well, you will receive a product list with fresh flowers and greens used along with all the supplies which were used in the demo. So that way you can prepare <coughs> ahead for, um, you know, for your hands-on session. So the next set of lessons will be on March 23rd and 24th on Tuesday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. for Francoise and 4 p.m. for me. The first session is a tutorial with Francoise. So she will be reviewing her work with you, especially the mechanics and techniques used a little more in depth to enable you to be able to create your own design. You'll watch a pre taped video lesson and a follow-up with Q&A with Francoise so that she can address any questions that you may have about her creative process. This session will be one hour plus, And the second session is a tutorial with me. So I will be following the same format as Francoise with short video and a follow-up Q&A to answer all your questions to get you started on your hands-on design workshop, uh, design assignments, I should say. 
these are all taped segments so that you'll be able to access for repeat viewing. Because, you know, if you can't catch something, you want to watch it over and over and try it out. The final session is on the following Sunday, March 28th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to view the gallery of students' work. That's always fun. So both Francoise and I will conduct a review with assessment based on sound use of elements and principles of design to understand what the strength of the design is and if there is in any area that can be improved. This is an interactive Zoom session with discussion on each of the design. It is an incredible learning opportunity for everyone. This will also be a tape segment to watch over again so that you can watch your pieces, <laughs> hear the comments all over again if you like. So we have a Facebook group page designated, as you probably have looked at already, uh, to each of the virtual workshop for the Designing for Excellence series. So that if you have further questions, you can post there so that we can provide assistance along the way. Feel free to post any pics and comments to share the learning and discussion with everyone in our group. We are really excited that you have decided to join us in this exciting design adventure. Uh, and everybody, uh, I'm here behind the camera, uh, Colin Hitomi son. I just wanted to mention that there is a typo on this graphic that and I made the same mistake in the email <laughs> that went out to the students earlier this week. The March 24th session should say Wednesday and not Tuesday. So it's Tuesday, Wednesday, the two um, mentoring sessions with Francoise and then with Hitomi. So correction on that. And I also apologize for the little glitch at the beginning. Uh, I guess I thought that she could read from the teleprompter a little faster than she can. Uh, it was actually, <laughs> like, oh I God. accidentally said it way too fast. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, I think that's all as far as corrections and uh, typos that I wanted to just point out before we head on to our next uh, slide. Right. Yeah, so let's go to the next slide because I want to uh, again sort of introduce you to the rest of the, the workshop series. And so let's look at the next one. So that's going to be the fresh look at Bridal Bouquets with Anya. And here we are. Hi, Anya. Great to see you. Hi. And what a great bouquet. What a great bouquet this is. This is so much fun. It's so you, Anya. And so <clears throat> basically, we're going to be exploring the mechanics and techniques behind the Art Nouveau garden style. That's what I'm going to be showing and the curvilinear shapes. And Anya, you'll be doing a lot of kind of European techniques and things, right? Yes, uh, I will be focusing definitely on a European inspired design, um, which is at the moment, in this time, more decorative and artful, I would say. And we see different shapes and forms and uh, our materials basically <laughs> built uh, from uh, many different types of materials. So um, I'll be sharing those um, uh, possibilities and explaining how certain things can be created with things which you have around the ha house sometimes we don't think about. So also um, making sure that, you know, we can think uh, creatively and use different materials and uh, but at the same time focusing on a floral part, which is very important and how we choose the appropriate materials for this type of designs. As we know, the water source is an um, issue. So we need to know our um, product very well so yeah exactly so yeah. it's going to be really fun uh, and it's going to be exactly the same format that i described uh with francois class so it, it starts with a demo uh on sunday for both of us working side by side and then followed up with a tutorial with anya specifically and then followed by a tutorial with me and then followed by the student review on the following Sunday. So you really have a nice window of time to go and secure material. We'll be supplying all the material list, what we use, what you purchase, and to work with yourself is up to you. You don't have to copy exactly what our materials were, but we give you that uh, just so that you know uh, what's, what's in the content of, of the design as you see the pictures and, and things like that afterwards. So thank you, Anya. Yes. It's going to be really a lot of fun. And I'm actually going to probably have Anya uh, on my Patreon meetup uh, just coming up in a couple of days because we're going to discuss a little bit, uh, you know, just kind of how we teach and uh, uh, in this particular um, 
kind of genre of uh, design. So it's going to be fun. You'll be see a lot, seeing a lot more of Anya soon. <laughs> yeah, Thanks a I'm lot, Anya. Very you are yeah, it'll I'm be very fun. excited sharing <laughs> with Yeah, it's going to be fun. Thank yeah, you. We'll have a great time. Okay, so let's look at the next class after. So this is going to be Brenna. And so this is a fresh look at sympathy design. So we're going to talk a little bit about sustainable approach to sympathy design and really think, talk about changing it from a funeral to a celebration of life, of about, about the life well lived, isn't it? That's kind of the yes. approach. Yeah, absolutely. More like a, a, I guess, a tribute, you know, rather than mourning, we are celebrating. And um, like you said, Tommy, I think we just need to move towards um, maybe more artistic approaches as opposed to the traditional. Um, not the tr traditional is bad, but we can certainly evolve with it. So that's kind of the focus that I, I'm, I'm going to take. Yeah. And you know what? We're just putting our heads together when we start mm -hmm. to really kind of fine tune uh, our presentation, what you're going to make, what I'm going to make. We're going to hope to cover uh, some diverse, some different pieces that uh, often are used for uh, sympathy work. So it, it's going to be yeah. fun. It's going to be really fun. Yeah. So I, I can't, I can't I'm, wait. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to dig in and, and uh, it's really cool to be teaching with you, Hitomi. <laughs> oh gosh, it's really cool to be teaching with you, Brenna. <laughs> We're going to have so much fun. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, yeah. So yeah, thank you, Brenna. Uh, yeah, we're going to have you. a good time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the final in the series, a fresh look uh, at the Tropical Nouveau bouquet. Actually, we're not saying fresh look because basically because Tropical Nouveau is the fresh. It's a fresh idea and it's an idea that's catching on like crazy. Look at the beautiful bouquet here that Sue made. So it's going to be a lot of like hand tie bouquets. That's what it's going to be. And but it's done with a Tropical Nouveau look, uh, which is a combination of tropicals with temperates. Are you excited about it, Sue? I'm really excited <laughs> uh, because there's so many things that you can do, uh, especially with the Tropical Nouveau. I mean, you can emphasize the tropical flowers or you can emphasize the delicate flowers with the temperate flowers. So there's there's so many um, different ways of showing how to make a tropical bouquet. Yeah. Or tropical nouveau bouquet. <laughs> yes, tropical nouveau bouquet. And, and the proportion of tropical to uh, temperate could be all varying because if you want it to be more softer and romantic, then you would do more temp temperates and less tropicals and vice versa and, uh, and exactly. until you get to the both ends. But, you know, with these COVID times, it really truly is the best way to travel through flowers. So you can feel the beautiful tropicals from the Haw Hawaiian islands uh, while we're still in a cooler, uh, you know, sort of late, late winter, spring kind of atmosphere here. Well, by the time this comes, it's going to be in the summer. So almost right. summer. So, but the thing is, I think to be able to, to mix, mix the two is really an exciting concept. So I'm really glad to have you along with this, this teaching because it's good to have somebody right there on the ground there in Hawaii telling us what this is all about as far as uh, the selection of flowers and that goes. We're hoping right. also, I, we're hoping also yeah. that we will have an uh, ability to advise you guys, that the students, that you can ship actually a box of flowers from Hawaii. We will give you instruction on who you might order from and what the varieties that are available at that time, so that you can actually get a great shipment of flowers from Hawaii to mix in with your temperance. It's going to be yeah. fun. I mean, especially when it's in summer, there's so much different uh, varieties available. So yes getting product shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. So you know what? Sue's going to be really my advisor to kind of give me that, you know, on the ground information on what we, we can work, work with, what we can use. And, you know, like you, you, you have to have an insider in this kind of stuff because, you know, like I don't always know what else there are and you do. So hopefully we can tap into her little secrets, secret sources so that we can share it with, you know, our students. So it's going to be really fun. I can't wait. It is. Very fun. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Sue. So let's oh, get you. going with uh, the rest of our orientation here. 
So here's, here's the four of us. And we're missing Francoise. I'm so sorry. I mean, I know she's watching. And so uh, anyway, this is the part that we are kind of wanting to share with you, uh, you know, designing for excellence, elements and principles of design quick review, because this is going to give you a little heads up on the language that we'll be using as we're teaching the different, different uh, terminologies uh, to do uh, to be within the elements and principles of design. Now, I based uh, all my all this most of the information on um, the book that I authored with Kathy Whalen and I, which is the fresh look at judging floral design. So, because of the fact that judging floral design is based on the elements and principles of design largely, um, this book. Uh, it's pretty definitive when it comes to, you know, all, all the definitions on all of these. So the elements and principles of designs are really truly like a building block. Uh, I'm going to read this book, okay, you guys? <laughs> of every successful composition. And mastering them will help you develop the critical thinking skill necessary to continuously up your floor artistry. That's what it's all about, to keep it clear and simple. I just want to kind of give you a little heads up on what elements of design is, and that is a study of your materials. It's really the ingredients, uh, all the components that you're using, and the ability to identify the physical characteristics of these design elements or components, to have the collective knowledge of the important identity that characterizes a material, which then can be showcased with a purpose in mind. So you, you just want to line up all your materials and identify its special attributes, special characters. And that's kind of what we do with people too, right? We look at people and say, oh, I really like her hair, or I, I, I want to be, I want her in my picture because her hair looks really great and it perfectly matches with my outfit. It, it's kind of like a composition inside a picture that, that you might take of your friends. So, so the principles of design is based on laws, uh, laws of nature or nature's law. It's always true. Like it never, it will never lie. If you would follow what happens out there in nature, you can't, you just can't be wrong. So that's why, you know, the, the laws that are made by man, the rules that we make, that's what we can break. But you can never break the law of nature because it is true. It's a classic tested guidelines that tell us how to organize or assemble the elements into pleasing and satisfying composition. That's really in a nutshell what those are, the elements and principles of design. So uh, we have a couple of kind of uh, um, quotes that we want to share with you and I want to share the first one with you. It's from the AIFD Guide to Floral Design. A floral artist learns to see any given plant material in terms of its elemental qualities, the line of its stem, the shape of its bud, the color of its petals, the texture of its leaves, etc. By skillfully applying the principles of design to combine these characteristics with those of other plant materials or with containers, props, accessories, and the surrounding environment, the desired composition takes shape. An intuitive designer understands the mood and energy expressed by a single shapely and colorful blossom or by the sinuous contortions of a piece of driftwood and acts accordingly. I mean, doesn't that pretty much state what we do in the flower arrangement? We're inspired by material and a lot, lot of times those special characters of material that leads us to design the way we do. So in, in the study of elements and principles of design, we can then, even afterwards, can identify what we did and why we did it and why the design is so successful. Okay. Just as furniture maker uses tools to manipulate his lumber, add some paint or varnish, perhaps some fabric, and a selection of hardware to realize his vision of a chair. So does the floral designer apply the principles of design to the elements at hand to produce new floral compositions that are limited only by the imagination of the artist? Also from the AIFD Guide to the Floral Design. Very good quote. Uh, yeah, I think that's really perfect because it really parallels in another profession, a furniture maker and how he approaches their design 
And, and so it's really the same thing, looking at the different elements that goes into it and how it comes together, how it composes. So it's very much the same as what we do in floral composition. I, I, those are really wonderful quotes. So thank you, AIFD oh. Guide to Floral Design. So let's look at the elements of design. And I just want to say, elements of design is really looking at the ingredients. So it's like cooking. So just think about that. So the elements of design, this is the, a concise list of nine elements of design that we are concerned about. You see line, form, color. I mean, these are kind of in order of importance too. Texture, space, pattern, size, fragrance, and light. You see an asterisk next to light because light is something that is possible to use in your accessories, like whether it be candles or whether it's LED lights and that, but is usually non-existent actually in the plant form or flower. Mind you, there are always exceptions, and that is things like there are plants that actually has like a fluorescence at night. And so that, that could be something that could be used if you know what that is. But largely, that's the only uh, element that is not always uh, available in the plant itself. So let's go over the term these, these terminologies and what they mean, the definitions. Okay, so this is Brenna. I'm going to read line. Line, physical characteristic of line in materials. Line is a geometric figure connecting two points and possessing one dimension, length. Also, the visual path that is created with materials to move the eye through a composition. Form. There are two aspects of form. Flower form is the actual physical shape of flower, the form of an individual component. Geometric form is the final silhouette or the shape of the 3D composition. For example, round, triangle, vertical form, horizontal form, crescent, for example. That's quite the study. It could be quite extensive. So next mm -hmm. is color. So the color is the visual hue caused by different qualities of reflected or projected rays of light. So it's a real science. There are three aspects to color to study if you're getting into the depth of color study. So you really need to, number one, be familiar with color wheel. There's all different kinds of color wheel, by the way. And number two, the color properties, the different, uh, you know, the value, the, the tones, the tints, I mean, all the different terminology that gives you different properties of color. And then there's three, the color harmonies, which is analogous, uh, you know, monochromatic, all the different color harmonies that you can study. So color is a pretty deep uh, area of study. Texture, it is the visual and tactile surface quality of material. It's such a short and concise definition, but it's such an exciting, broad uh, element to study. Uh, it, it's one of the things that really gives you uh, really a, a lot of emotion and a lot of drama in the design. Space. It's the complete area that is occupied by the composition. Within that space are the positive and negative space. Space is definitely 3D. And then we have a pattern, a distinct motif that may exist in nature or be, be man-made. It can be featured alone or in the multiples. Patterns are a repetitive configuration of line, form, color, texture, and or space. They're very interesting, actually. I love patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we have a size, the physical dimensions of a given component, line, form, and or space, or overall composition. Fragrance. It is the quality of having a sweet or delicate odor or aroma. The characteristic is innate to some flowers 
and brings the fifth sense to design. And fragrance, I think, really can take you to another space, another place uh, of memories. So it's very important in that sense. And light. Light is the source and or quality of illumination that enables vision. Depending on the source, it has certain qualities and can be considered warm, cool, natural light, etc. And I've always said lighting is everything. It's one thing to have a design, um, but to have it lit can be very magical in a sense. So whether it's natural, artificial, uh, colored lighting, it plays an important role as well. Excellent. So that pretty much covers the elements of design. So let's look at the principles of design. I think, you know, we, every time we teach a series of class like this, I really like to just do this over again, just by remembering what all these components really are. I think it really helps us. So let's look at the principles of design. So that would be it, like in cooking, the recipe. It's like, what do you do with elements? This is what you do with uh, using the principles of design. So what we've done uh, in, in our book is define the or divide the principles of design into different dynamics. When we say dynamics, it just means that it makes things happen. So in the dynamics of equilibrium, we have the uh, principle of balance. In the dynamics of defining space, we have two principles. One is proportion and the other one is scale. In the dynamics of interest, we have two principles. One is dominance and the other one is emphasis. The dynamics of difference, this is a very important one because this is where a lot of the drama and exciting emotions and uh, expressions happen. And that is the story of opposition, principle of opposition, principle of contrast, and principle of variation. This is what creates drama. It's a real storytelling uh, set of principles. And then the dynamics of cadence and dimension has <clears throat> four principles of design, rhythm, dimensionality, repetition, and transition. And in the dynamics of belonging, there are two. One is harmony, and the last one is unity. Okay. So balance. It is a state of equilibrium, physical and or visual stability relative to an imaginary or active vertical axis. It is experienced both physically and visually. Proportion, sorry. <laughs> is the comparative relationship in size, volume, and or quanti quantity that exists between ingredients within the composition. The relationship of one portion to another in a design or one portion to the whole. And scale is a ratio of size, the size of composition relative to the given space or to the surrounding environment. So proportion is really what happens inside the design. Scale is what that design does to the space that you're given. Dominance, visual organization within the design that draws more attention. Deliberate commitment to clear implementation of a contrast between materials, strengthens feature or elements of the design creates dominance. Strongest features, I'm sorry. Strongest features or elements of design creates dominance. Then emphasis. An area of the greatest visual importance. It draws the eye to itself. Focal area or focal emphasis des describes the area that draws first attention. Opposition, strong contrast between elements, counterpoint in relationship to each other. Difference, difference that dramatizes conflict. It is a powerful storytelling principle that can deliver impact and emotion to a design. 
contrast. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> contrast is created when there is enough difference between materials in a design that it becomes a featured quality. The concept of contrast, when delivered with convincing clarity, strengthens a design for our storytelling, a florist floral storytelling. And variation. The concept of variation is expressed through subtle differences among similar materials, techniques, etc. Rhythm. It is the visual cadence piece created by the placements of repetitive components that are intended to direct the viewer's eyes through the design. And dimensionality. Floral design is an art that reflects nature and utilizes the third dimension of depth and distance. It does this by varying spaces, up and down, in and out, between plant materials. Repetition. It often creates rhythm in a design. When color, texture, line, form, or pattern is re repeated, it brings emphasis, unity, and cohesiveness to the design. And transition. Transition provides a bridge. It is a connector, a method of using material to evolve a concept, idea, effect, or value. Harmony. <clears throat> Harmony creates cohesive relationship within the uh, composition. It is characterized by the consistent expression of the mood in the design. Harmony also relates to suitability of the design to its surrounding. And unity, that's an important one. Unity is a quality of oneness of spirit, of effect, of purpose, of thought, of style, and of story. It is a compatibility of all elements of the design to create a harmonious whole or a consistent story. Another uh, quote. At beginning, flower arranger may feel intimidated by the elements and principles of design, but rather than limiting and restricted, they actually provide us limitless possibilities. For they are the keys that unlock the secrets of pleasing floral design. Again, from the AAD uh, Floral Design Guide. I think that's a real good one because a lot of people, when they first start the design and they don't know any of these terminologies, all these sort of ideas, concepts, um, you know, the laws of nature, etc. And it seems like such dry theory to, to memorize all these words, you know, uh, people try to come up with systems to remember what those words were by finding what the letters that starts them all and trying to come up with something to remember. And it really is not something that you want to depend on memory to memorize. You really need to internalize it. You really have to know what it is that you're doing as you're designing and relate to these words. Because in doing so, it just becomes an automatic, almost intuitive process. And that's what we're hoping to do with um, this study, that we use this language regularly so that we, it flows out of us as we talk about what we created and as you start to teach what you create. So um, uh, I think it's a very, very important study. And we're really thrilled to really make this a very big part of our teaching through every one of, of the, the, the workshop in our series. So I just want to go and just add in a couple of things. These are beyond elements and principles of design, but very important. And it's part of the book, our book. And so I want to add the tangible standards of design because these are items that are not part of the elements and principles of design, but these are still part of the, what we judge or what we evaluate in a design. We want to look at the product quality. We want to also look at the product selection, what your choices of flowers were and if it seems to make sense. We want to look at the mechanics. Oh my God, that's a very deep area that we'll certainly be talking a lot about. And the workmanship that's involved in these mechanics. Is it done beautifully? Is it, you know, all the pieces, um, 
like, uh, you know, what we want to do is make sure the mechanics not exposed. The, and then there's a the construction, like as in uh, structures that you build, armatures that you build, and a craftsmanship of it. So these are tangible things that you can see, things that are really black and white. Is it good or is it not good? So these are the areas that we can certainly advise when we teach that, yes, you can do a little bit better by doing this or that way. So these, this is a very important part, the tangible standards of design. And then this all equals the aesthetic standards of design. It's the quality of design in the end. It's a sort of a summary of what has happened with the use of elements and principles of design. So because we have no place to put something like creativity, it's not really part of the elements and principles of the design. It's really the result. <clears throat> so is it a real creative design? You know, to gauge the success of your creativity is an assessment to, at the end after you look at all what is going on in the design. And then you can see what was really creative about it. Also the theme development. So if there's a certain theme, then you want to make sure that there's a certain suitability to the theme. And this is another thing that we look at uh, when we look at, you know, if it's wedding work, if it's for sympathy, is it suitable? And is the theme developed properly and, and, and cohesively to that? Tension is something that we may have talked about earlier, I'm not sure, but tension is really the result uh, it's an artful term. It's a result of how you are able to create a, a, this wonderful feeling that communicates to the other side. So when you want to create something that is really poignant and that's sensuous, is it looking like that from the viewer's eye? Because if it is, then you were successful in creating attention. Expression and emotion. So that's another thing with a lot of the work that we do, you know, we're expressing our love, we're expressing sadness, uh, we're express expressing sympathy, you know, all of these things. These expression and emotion is that communicating. Also economy of means, which is have you maximized with what material you have to get the, max, the absolute optimum effect that you can. So it's like, uh, a lot about less is more when you can do with less, but it looks like more, that would be economy of means. Originality is always important. Is there something that's really special about how you created it that looks distinctly original? And then, of course, the words distinctive, distinction, that is a work separate itself from many other that you've seen. And of course, beauty. Beauty is such a beautiful word. It's also a word that people throw around, oh, that's beautiful, oh, that's gorgeous. You know, all those words, they're really a, a final outcome of what you've seen that you can then say, summarized in those words. So these are really the, the equals, the result, the aesthetic, um, aesthetic uh, effect of what you've created, the quality of design. So that was good. So that was kind of the great review of uh, the elements and principles of design. So. What we're going to teach uh, as we use these words constantly, pointing out, you know, the, the textual effect of something that, and, and the way you use this and that material side by side, so effective. You know, we talk about this. That's what we're referring to, the elements and principles of design. So what we want to do in the process of teaching by using these words and using these terminologies to describe what you've created and uh, also giving you tips on how you can correct the problem also using these terminologies so that we're speaking the same language. And it culminates in actually these 10 points so that it, it helps us evaluate your work and give you and use these same language. Then you will also have learned it so that you can self-assess when you are finished with this course and you carry on to continue your study to do more and try different things so that you can continue to use these terminology and the self-assessment process, these 10-point self-assessment, to see what your strength is, what the area of improvement, uh, how you can fix things. When you sometimes can't see exactly what the problem is, but when you go through the list, you may be able to then pinpoint what the problem is that, so that you can fix it. So you'll get actually a self-assessment sheet that you'll start to use uh, so that you can compare what we say to what you think so that you can start to kind of now sort of gauge your 
uh, understanding of elements and principles of design. So just to go over this, the mechanics, professional application finishing touches, balance, we want to always look at balance and we'll share with you how to look at balance to assess if you've done a good job or not, physical and visual. Size, the proportion and scale of what you created. So one is within the design and one is in relative to the, the, the space that you're given. Dimensionality and depth, use of space. Um, and of course, dimensionality and depth is very much part of the principle of design. Texture, so visual and tactile. Line, the movement that you've created, the flow, the rhythm in the line. Color, the harmony that you've created, the balance in the color, uh, the quantity of color, and the effect that you created with the color. Unity, is there emphasis and is there a certain harmony that you've created with the oneness to keep, bring it all together? And then the theme development, interpretation, creativity that is involved in how you design your particular category of design. And then we assess at the very end of it all, to summarize it all, how do you feel about overall composition? And basically what we do is give it a designation between one to five, with three being average, five being excellent, one being poor, so that we can assess uh, your work when we, when we look at what you do, as well as you can assess your own work to see how you thought you did. So this is the way we're going to help you understand how you, uh, uh, how you were able to create your design and, it, and its effectiveness. So let's just give it a try here of how, how we kind of look at um, our design for assessment. So the first arrangement, I mean, by the way, I just want you to know that every one of these arrangements are mine um, so that I, I won't have any hurt feelings if you think it's not very good. <laughs> Let's, but anyway, I thought we would cover every one of the categories that we're covering in our workshop. So the first one is flowers to wear and it's a flower floral necklace that I created for one of the articles for the Creative Edge. So, uh, Francoise is not here to give a uh, critique on what, you know, maybe the positive. Um, so I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> I think I'll, the positive. I'll give a positive. Okay, please, <laughs> please, please. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I mean, what's striking to me, first of all, is the, the, um, the emphasis on color. Um, with just definitely. keeping with the color palette that you have. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's uh, quite clear. It's, it's, um, you know, definitely got that pinky, uh, very feminine, and the form, I mean, the symmetry, I think is really beautiful in this one. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's interesting because you're talking about sort of the color harmony. It really is an anal analogous color harmony because it goes from the violet to red violet to red. And the tints and tones that gives us the, the pinks, which is a tint of a red. So that it really is the color harmony. Now, it's true that there's green, but green in this case really serves as a given because every flower has some sort of green. Uh, so that uh, that's kind of how it's seen. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we look at different designs to point out uh, some of the color harmonies that's used. So I'm going to actually um, give the what area of improvement could be um, because, you know, it, it's it's not always like sometimes it's so good that you don't have to but but I, I'm going to give a, a little area of improvement. I feel like um, there could be a little bit more like a rhythm in the way that material are sort of put together. Like I have a um, the rosary vine. I'm trying to think of its botanical name. Can anybody remember the botanical name of the rosary vine? Uh, what was it? Serapegia would I? Very good, thank you, Serapegia. Yes, so with it, like you have one on the one side, like a pie and two on the other side, that's good. Uh, I like the asymmetry of that, not just one and one and equal, but it's all, actually exactly in the same spot. I feel like the one on the right, if it went a little bit higher and one on the left come a little bit lower and maybe a small one at the top, another single, like a one and one and then two together would create a little bit of rhythm. I know I'm being really, really picky, but with my work, I want to be picky because I want to do it better. That's, that's a whole idea about the self-assessment is that you will find something where you can improve. 
And because the, what that means is if you can improve it, that means I gained a point. And that means that it's a better arrangement than what I had. And that's kind of what, how you're going to learn how to improve yourself by self-assessment. So yeah, that's kind of how we're going to do this. Okay, so let's look at the next picture. Okay, the next one is a bridal bouquet. And this is a curvilinear bouquet. Uh, I think it's interesting because I think this model held this a little bit different than what I had imagined. But that's okay because I, I, it still shows the curvilinearness and I used the Middleino extender and whatever. So, Anya, uh, can you tell us what I did okay? <laughs> <laughs> I did okay. Well, it is definitely a gorgeous bouquet. And um, but yes, I, I think when you look at that, you, you see the color. One of the things is very, very striking. So it's very dominant the, the, the beautiful roses, as well as the textures. Uh, you can see um, beautiful textures there. So uh, that's like a emphasis on the uh, roses, I would say with the color, definitely. Yeah, color is um, such an important, such an important element, isn't it? I mean, it's the one that people notice the most. And so doing a really a good job with a color harmony is a very important, uh, like it's, it, it's kind of almost like a, um, a tip. Uh, if, if you do a good color, it's going to be quite successful. It's one of the best area to really shine. And I think you are absolutely right um, with what you said, Anya, too, with texture. I think um, the fritillaria, um, the texture of that material in relation to the fullness of the, the roses, I think it really communicates well. It's also an analogous color harmony because it's coming from the red violet to red and its tints and tones. And so, but... Okay, so uh, how can this be corrected? Well, I would say, really, I would just like to ask the bride to hold it in the right direction. <laughs> so it's really not my, not my fault. Because obviously what I try to create is kind of a, a curving in one way and then a little bit, you know, it's a, a curvilinear form. It's almost a little bit like a crescent if you really look at it from a certain point. And carrying it in the right way really shows it that. But... That's just the way it is with bride. They just kind of carry it in whatever way. So, uh, but that's that's really where I feel like uh, the improvement is. This could have been shot with the uh, right attitude, so that you would see more clearly how beautiful the curvature, the curvilinearness of this design is. Okay. Uh, if I can add, yes, you can definitely yes. see. But I think also the picture because it's um, almost like a portrait mode. So obviously the. Uh, you don't see as much, you have to really look carefully for the beautiful uh, line and the form which you would normally see, uh, probably as you mentioned, if it was held differently and focus a little bit um, as a photography. So, but um, yeah. that's why I think it also is different reflection, how, how it's photographed and um, how it's held. So you can see a different aspects of the design, the principles and elements which are more visual, stronger than others. Yeah, absolutely. And very good point, too. And this is something that we want to advise because, uh, you know, I've done a few workshops where we have students working in photo. And this is the basically the way you're going to submit your assignment. And what we're, uh, what we're going to say sort of heads up right from the beginning is because there's two instructors working with you. So you are actually permitted <laughs> to, uh, but limited to two designs. Like if you want to do two designs to kind of take in one, you know, kind of method of teaching a style, and then you want to try another one, that's fine. So, I mean, we need for you to do in an assignment, one design for sure, for review. But if you do two, because you want to try out both ideas or multiple ideas, that's, that's a max we, because we want to limit it. To, we don't want you to create five so that it, it's, you're going to sort of uh, um, monopolize our time, you know, by having too many to show. We want to limit it to two. But, yeah, really enjoy the class and make some things that's really cool so that we can kind of look at it and uh, help you uh, w with it, uh, evaluate it. So, uh, and good photography is really important. 
So make sure that the background doesn't interfere. In this case, the background is, is, is um, out of focus so that it really, you know, for wedding purpose, this is really a perfect picture. But mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, take a picture with a real clean background so we can see the detail of your design. That would be very helpful. Okay. Thanks, Anya. Okay, so we're on to the sympathy, and this is one from one of my, you know, articles that I wrote for Creative Edge. I think it was last year. Uh, no, year before last, actually, may have been. August 2019, I think. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> so, uh, what's good about it, Brenna? Oh, gosh. <laughs> the list goes on. Uh, but first of all, it's, it's quite a striking design. I mean, as soon as you see it, this would be, if I was scrolling through my phone, this would be a, definitely, a definite stop <laughs> and study and, you know, zoom in to all the interesting intricacies and textures. Um, and the photo is beautiful, too. And I'm, I'm guessing it was Colin's photo. <laughs> um, uh, what I really love is actually the clarity. I think there's such clarity in the theme and symbolism. I mean, for sympathy, this is the kind of ultimate tribute, right? Of, of a send off of a, a beautiful spirit, a beautiful soul and with the, the soft textures and um, really it's a neutral color palette. And I think with having the neutral color palette, it, it really therefore emphasizes more of the form and the flow. And of course, you're the queen of lines, I think of line design and you know um i think the pattern in the middleino the wings um it just really takes your eye it's it's soft it's pleasing and um i i think it really gives uh that sense of peace that families and loved ones would want to see yeah actually it it is a design that is almost sort of semi-novelty-ish you know it's something that I don't often do, but in this case, what it symbolizes is just mm -hmm. such a lovely thought. Um, and so using the middle you know, um, spiral, um, not only spiral, just makes it possible to create this kind of angel wing thing that just seems like such a lovely, it's a lo lovely novelty. It really is a, an add-on that really tells us great story that it's, it's kind of it's transcendent too really yeah i think so. you know in in all it's kind of a universal symbol and and it really is, um, you it know, really is. there's nothing cheesy about it it's a, a very yeah. artistic form of it which which really um i think lends to just the in, the beauty of it as a whole there, there's actually you know there's a lot of things that you know and this, these are the kind of things that we'll do when we do our workshop is to kind of point out things that we did the things that we put in to make it more effective. You know, there's um, just different types of textures, like using the middle, you know, in the, in the angel wing, but then we have middle, you know, little bit sticks that are kind of made into almost like a amaranthus, like a hanging amaranthus that's made out of middle, you know, so there's a cohesiveness yes. of the use of the same material, but used differently. That's, that's yes. really always interesting. And then also the use of uh, the whaleback or accordion palm has the same kind of almost like a venation that is evident also in the angel wing so that it has a similar pattern. But it's asymmetrical, only one instead of double, because if you do double, then it becomes a little bit too redundant and too, too much of the same mirror image, which is not what you want, that even though you have it in the angel wing. But... The correction that I would like to make is that there's a hole smack right there in the middle that's just black hole. And I wish that I had actually moved up one of the uh, anthurium up into there so that the, there's a real nice kind of contrast, a much more evident contrast of anthurium to that beautiful um, garden rose. Because if they were more side by side, you'll see, that's what Tropical Nouveau is is that what, the one significantly flatters the other. You know, anthurium makes the garden rose look more beautiful and garden rose makes anthurium stand out. So that's the whole thing with Tropical Nouveau, with the co combining, when you do it really well, it just makes each other look even more better. So um, yeah, that's, that's what uh, that hole, ever since we shot it and, and you put it in the article, I'm like, that hole, I should have done something with that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Colin, so we need that, the Photoshopping. Come on. <laughs> Photoshopping. So, you know, theory. but this is a thing. Like, even though I really love this arrangement, after the fact, if I had actually checked through the list, I would have spotted it. I would have fixed it. And that's the whole idea of the self-assessment is that you will, it's kind of like, even when you write a, a, a book report, you edit it to fix any kind of error that you see when you do the, the reread, you know, and, and, and you edit it several times. You also need to edit your design. You need to look at it, not with your, the same designer eye. That's one other thing that I always teach is don't design and then, and then look to see and critique your own work. You design, you step away from the table, go get a coffee, come back with your little list of 10 different points, and now you are looking with a different set of eyes. Not the, not the eye that loved what you just made, but the eye that's going to check and see that everything looks beautiful in it. Because in that self-assessment process, you'll pick up the error and you'll be able to fix it. And that's, what you, that's the skill you need to learn with elements and principles of design so that you do pick these things up so that you will be able to find it yourself that you don't always need a teacher to tell you that that you will learn it so that's that's the process so this is good this is a good example of that yeah thank you Brenna we're gonna have a, we're gonna teach really well together I, I can tell all, all, all of us <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a great com yes. combo good <laughs> excellent so let's look at the last one so this is not a bouquet, even though it's going to be tropical nouveau, nouveau bouquet, uh, because that's going to emphasize on the hentai bouquet. But this is a tropical nouveau design, so I put it in here. So what do you think? What do you think, Sue? What's your opinion on this? Uh, Sue, if you could just unmute yourself. Sorry. Is it working? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so while she's fixing, let me just talk about it, sure. and then we'll see how she comes on. So obviously, Tropical Nouveau, this one here is probably more, well, uh, it's, it's probably more tropical than temperate. I mean, the temperates are the ranunculus and the bells of Ireland and a little bit of amaranthus, and the rest of it are tropicals. So you do have, okay. Okay, Sue. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. great. Okay. Good. Well, when, okay. I first, when I first looked at this bouquet, what was really um, definite was definitely the lines when you see the branches um coming out of the arrangement and then your focus goes on to the anthurium um, but definitely the way that the proportion of the arrangement is going upwards uh, definitely that caught my eye especially and then it softened up with the bells of ireland um, on the top as well yeah uh, so the line is quite strong in this one which is kind yeah. of my little strength that I, I like. And um, basically, I, you know, as I'm looking at it, this, this is always so good to do. You, you got to look at your work and assess your own work. And what I've got to say about this also is it's a lot about designing in, in twos. It's, it's pairings. So it's two of this, two of this, two of this. That's uh, largely, except for the rattlesnake ginger, there's three of those. But... Pretty much everything else, the two pin cushions, the two bells of Ireland, the two, the fasciated willow, one is split into two and the other is a single, but it's two stems, two anthuriums. Pairings are really, really, it works really, really well because it's really, you place one and then the other ones that respond to the other. And so if you do this sort of uh, throughout the design, it's almost always successful. So uh, there's a nice system that I developed there that works. But... How can it be fixed? I'm looking at it, looking at it. Um, uh, while, you, while you think, can I? Uh, yeah. There's a question about okay. this design. Okay, excellent. <laughs> 
Regina Ings asking, it's stunning. What is the material used to make the sting hanging down in the design? I think that might have been from the sympathy design. Oh, was it from? Because I think it design? popped up before this popped up. Oh. Maybe Regina. Okay. <laughs> maybe I wasn't watching. <laughs> okay, so maybe. That's okay, and I think it, it's the middle. You know, it's the middle. You know, um, little uh, bits that you I'll go back uh, really quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think oh, this string. is the one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so she was asking about that string of white I that's so. coming down. Yes, mm. I think. Yeah, that's middle. You know, cut into little pieces. <laughs> I have to tell you. I love this technique, but it takes a long time. Yeah, you, you stop doing that. Yeah, I, I, or, or, or what it is, is I've made two, and I pull it out of every arrangement I make so that I don't have to make it again, so I can use it multiple times by repeat use. <laughs> it's very tedious. Like it, it, it's, it starts out exciting, and then it's like three hours later, it's like I've only made a foot or two feet of it and it's frustrating but it really is a beautiful effect um, and what is possible with the middleino so i mean i am kind of the middleino queen i just try to make everything with middleino <laughs> okay all right all right so back to this um yeah uh hmm. i'm really actually quite okay with everything and and i'm actually looking at it and i'm thinking that even the rattlesnake um, ginger, there's actually four of them. There's two on either side of the ranunculus and two in the back. So it's like, it's still in pairs. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually being fairly consistent, even with the oncidium, it's a pair, you know, up and then down to the back end. Um, I'm actually kind of like this one, mostly. Um, I mean, it's not perfection, but I just don't know what I would do different to make it better. Does anybody, any of uh, the other instructors have any suggestions? <laughs> I'm not offended if you pick it apart because, <laughs> you know, like how are you going to get better if you don't, if you don't look at what are uh, potentially, you know, could improve. Um, I, for me, okay, if, if I can, can, if I could just uh, pop in mm -hmm. just for a quick second. Um, sure. For me, mm -hmm. the, the height of the willow yeah. and the bells of Ireland creates um, kind of a, a, just a straight line, a little bit abrupt for me, maybe. Um, you know, the lines are all flowing up, but maybe I just want to see like one the one one branch a little bit taller or something, just a little break in that yeah. visual line. Yeah, you know what? Uh, you know, we have this with green talks in that in the commentary too but there's things that i have to say this because there's things that we do to get a square shot it's 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 for putting posting and everything or you know because i have a tendency to want to go really high extension is also my my thing i i love to have sticks that are way up high but when you do that you have to step back further away from the design and everything shrinks because of it and that's been my real nemesis for doing photography for many years that every time i make something the photographer has to back up so far and that the core of the design just becomes so small because of it and it's really hard to actually lay it out in the magazine and so then I was kind of taught to be more square with my shots. And I think this one is one of those situations because so often what I do gets chopped off because of, of the extension. But to designing person, for sure what you say is absolutely true. It would look so much better if I'm competing and it's being looked at as, you know, in person definitely going higher would create more drama and and creates a little bit more feel of asymmetry and uh, just more natural You're we have a right we have that. a couple comments huh? we have a couple of suggestions yes? in the chat okay. good would in you like to chat. hear them yeah let's okay. have it uh kim mesworthy said a different container perhaps oh this is interesting and then she added the bright white is hard Okay, that's interesting. Um, this was an exercise, and, and this was... I'll also mention Terry Godfrey also 
because it's related. She says it feels a bit top heavy, maybe a more substantial bass. Okay, this is interesting because, um, like, this as a, a teaching lesson is really interesting because this container is actually a rectangle looked at from the ends. Because a slimmer bottom rather than a rectangle wide, it's one of those flat container that's like this. And by using it this way, I can get more dimension depth on layers of things coming tight into a container. So it is a container that is much more broader that is used in the opposite way, like a longitudinally to get more tighter look. The idea was really, it's kind of what Ikebana is. It's Ikebana, the base always goes into a, like a, a that, oh, what is the name of that mechanic that I can't remember the Japanese name. It goes into a very tight, small kind of, uh, like in the rika. And that's kind of what I wanted to create with it, the elegance of everything coming from a much tighter, tighter binding point. Done because it will have depth to do it. So there was a certain point to the way I arranged to get this effect. And I think, you know, some of the comments were well taken, but a lot of the comments are also from a different point of view. And this is, in some ways, this is a kind of cultural because this is kind of designed in an Ikebana-ish way. And that's why it has a very tight container. The color of the container, I think the white, yeah, is, is stark because there's no white in this container. This is true, but that's also another reason why I didn't want it wide the other way because then it becomes much more dominant. This makes it less, almost like a little bud vase. So reducing that, uh, that, that size of the white to do it in this narrower way is better than if I had used it the usual way. Most people would use it almost always the other way, which also becomes a very flat design that designs this way rather than this way. This is what I call a, 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 a three row style where I design in three rows front to back. So there was a certain intent to this, this particular way of designing. Couple, yeah. couple more? Mm -hmm. Should I? Yeah. Uh, Brenna, did you have something? Yeah, Brenna? Oh, I was just going to say, I see a little bit of unity with the anthurium tones, the anthurium color. Yeah. Is it the yeah. tropic, tropic uh, ice, is it called, with yes. the white in the middle? Yeah, actually, there's a little bit of white. You're right. I, I forgot about that. So, <laughs> actually, thank you. Thank you. Um, no, that, that is true. There is some white in there, so yeah. th there's something about that. Um, Terry just added that dimension is hard to capture in a photo. Oh, totally. And I think we wanted to shoot this one kind of straight on because yeah. sometimes you can shoot from a slight angle to kind of recapture some of that dimension. But I think you wanted it shot this way. I also mentioned that uh, Maureen Christmas added, what about size of anthurium in relation to other components? Color adds to advancement and impact. I think that's in some ways uh, a matter of taste and there's taste and then there's educated information that, you know, has more substance behind it. And I think, again, this was an article about Tropical Nouveau and I really wanted to show off the tropical because that's a part that is scary for some people, how to design with it. It's so big, but looking at it like this, it's... It's, it's not, for some people, they'll find it too big, but not for me and not for anybody who loves tropicals. So it, it's really a matter of orientation, whether you are actually comfortable with it or not, because I think that's the whole sort of the nemesis behind the use of both for a lot of people. Like they can't see or it's too much of a conflict or they, it takes over, but maybe that's the, that's the effect we want. And this is one thing that I will share with you in teaching. We're not teaching what's right and wrong. We're teaching how to be able to explain why you did what you did. Because I always say to someone, like if I give a commentary that says, you know, I think this will fix this or this will help improve this. But if somebody has a reason why they did it that way, and they want to tell me what that is, they can also still convince me 
that it's okay because it's not so black and white. The only thing that's black and white is the aesthetic, um, the one that, that we talked about, uh, not the aesthetic, um, tangible. The tangible standards. That's the only thing that's black and white, the mechanics. You know, did you cut off those little ends of the bind wire? Yes or no, true or false, black or white. You know, that needs to be fixed. Or, you know, the glue, glue strings, that needs to be fixed, it's black and white. But the decision to design in a certain way, if you're able to tell me why, by use of terminologies and elements and principles of design, I could be convinced and say, yeah, I, I get what exactly why you did that. And that's okay. But that's the way also for us to communicate so that you can actually, we can almost have a little bit of a, a friendly debate about why we designed it like this so that you can kind of justify why you did it. And if you know this well enough, you can sway people to be convinced that, okay, I love that. Because let's, let's, let's uh, sort of get over the things we like and we don't like. Those are the things that you have to remember as a, an evaluator, as a judge, and a teacher. Because teacher could also give their opinion about what they like and what they don't like, which is not a good lesson. It's really about, think about this. Did you do it this way and why? So that you get out of the students why they did something so that then you can make an assessment rather than saying, well, if I were doing that, I would have done it this way. That is usually more of an opinion. So um, this is the way we teach, is that you will have a, an opportunity to show us. We will give you some really good advice on how it could be improved from our eyes. But if you feel like you have another option or another way or that what you did that you can justify by way of using this language, we all understand what we've got to say about our, our own work or your work. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's really just an educated understanding of justifying why we do what we do. Because if we did it right, then people will like it because you did it right. You did all the combination of things that makes a good design, a composition. And that's what we are wanting to teach is different ways to do things a little bit better. Yeah, I think it, it, it uh, translates, yeah, from it, it takes you from your instinctive um, ways of designing and helps you better articulate, mm -hmm. you know, the whys, like you said, the whys, exactly. the hows. You know, and, and the thing is, just uh, in the broader world, that little bit of explanation can p make people like something that they didn't think they liked because it's an informed decision. After you get the information, they're no longer ignorant to not to understand. Now they understand and it's like, yeah, I really like it now. I mean, isn't that the way it is with everything? Once they learn something, they understand better to be able to, to, to evaluate what's good or not. And so that's what we wanna do with you know, all the designs that we do. We wanna create something that's really effective and beautiful and we have a reason behind it. That's what elements and principles of design clarifies the reasons. Yeah. I'll just add, uh, there was somebody, Trish Rapper, that did like the way that you used the container on the end of the side. She yeah, I really mean, cool. I think it's cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I like doing things like, why people say, why would you do that? It's because I can get deeper I can get more insertions looking like coming from a much tighter bind point. It's like, it's for me, that's, that's what Ikebana is for me. It comes from a Kenzan. All of it comes from that little Kenzan. And I, I like that idea. And, you know, it, it really is a very clever solution when you don't have a narrow container that you can use it this way and make it, get a narrow container out of something that is usually not used that way. 
So it's a, a little bit of cleverness. It's a little creative thinking that gives you something different from what normally is used in the other direction. So I think there's certain value. That's where there is the value on the aesthetic standard. On the creativity side, if, I'm, if that be one of the bigger factor, and this is what I hope that a good teacher does, is that they understand that. That they are like, oh, that's why she did it, designed it that way. That is clever. And give a person credit for that creativity instead of saying, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. To me, that is not a well-informed teacher if it's all dependent on what they like or they don't like. Teaching is all about being able to express the reasons and being able to see the effort that was made by the students to try to communicate because what you're trying to show them is how they can communicate better and make it clearer. That's what the whole purpose of the study of elements and principles is. So are we ready to do some Q&A? Yeah, let's do Q&A. All right. Shall we do that? I'll just... Uh... Forgive us if there's a little bit of feedback. I know a couple of people said that there was a little bit, so I've been a scene like this. It's it's very it's a little difficult. Okay. <laughs> but I'll start with um, Regina. Did have a question earlier that I said I would ask, and uh, she said, "Does elements and principles of design include in the course uh, in the actual design for excellence course?" And uh, I guess you'll touch on it a lot in every module, correct? Every Every lesson that we teach will have the terminology in it. And if you don't understand it at the beginning because you're still new to it, we'll keep drilling it and drilling it and drilling it. By the time you're done with the fourth one with Sue and I, you will know it, like I say, like the back of your hand. And that is a huge accomplishment when you've internalized these terms and know exactly what it is that you're trying to do because that in itself is like graduating from the best university of floristry, is knowing what that is, what it takes to make a great composition. So uh, yes, it's in every lesson, but you will have this tape to know that all those definitions, so that if you forget something, go back to it and look at this. And you know, we'll provide a concise kind of format that you can have as a checklist always so that you know what, uh, what the term, terms are. Yeah. Uh, next question. I can probably answer this one. If you can't make the 11 a.m. session on Sunday, when will the recording be available? Oh, that will be your question. Are you sure you don't want to answer this one? Uh, no, I have no <laughs> okay. idea. I don't want to get pushed either. <laughs> um, the way we'll do it, uh, it should be available almost immediately afterwards. Um, oh, don't it's, say that because it won't be. Oh, it's very much like today's live stream, though. So, like, <laughs> the same link will be the recording. So, technically, you should be able to watch it. Like, uh, even as it's going, you should be able to rewind or watch it afterwards. If I do do anything uh, to edit it and then has to be reprocessed, then that's when it could take longer. So, depending on... It could be right away. It could be later in the day. Either way, it'll be same day. It'll be same day. Yeah. yeah. And the beauty of this is, I mean, that tape is available to watch over and over again. And you can go to exactly the spot where you want to review something again or look at in more detail what was done. Uh, and of course, you can just make it larger so you can zoom in a little bit, whatever. Right. And so, um, you know, it just makes it so that you don't lose any parts of the lesson. Because I know in class for me sometimes, you know, I kind of space out sometimes and I forget a little section and I wish I was paying more attention. Does that happen to you guys out there? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, so, no. I'm, I'm always paying <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, this is, so it's a great feature doing this virtually, being mm -hmm. able to do that. It's a big, big plus for a class. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just so everybody knows out there, like the the, the Sunday demo, which will be kind of the same for each module or each topic, uh, that will be very much a demonstration like today where you'll be able to ask questions in the chat, uh, but all the other mentor sessions, the review, that will be done most likely like in a Zoom meeting where you'll be able to interact uh, with the instructors uh, if you have any questions and specifically if you're actually uh, in the middle of designing something and 
and want to show them and ask them a question about something that you're working on, uh, we'll do it that way. Um, next question. I guess this is a question for me, uh, Kim Ezworthy's. When we submit photos, will they need to be from all angles? Oh, maybe this is for you. So as to better show these elements and principles. Actually, what I'd like, I mean, you know, I've kind of distilled it down to, because I do a lot of review of a lot of pictures uh, for a lot of designers. So what I prefer is I need a front picture. And it would be really good, actually, if you have a video of all the way around. So you have one picture that we should be looking at it from that side and then a video just all around. Yeah, just we'll put do it our... on a turntable and just turn it. <laughs> I'll do my best to figure out a way to for everybody to upload videos and still show it in review sessions. That could be tricky, uh, See, there but go. we'll try. <laughs> I asked again for something that I haven't consulted with him yet. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's try it. Let's, let's try that. I think, uh, I mean, especially... If it's, yeah, if it's just photos, like, all angles is a good idea. Um, in the past, like, with other, yeah. with, like, the Gregor course, we limited the number of pictures. This, we can probably not put a limit on pictures or video. Yeah, well, I, I, no, I think we need to put li limit on <laughs> okay. pictures because... I didn't consult this with you. Uh, no, so. because, you know, I know that <laughs> with the, uh, the Hawaii design competition, there's people that sent, like, 15 pictures. Like, no, what I want is if you have 15 pictures, I want to, I want you to distill it down to two. So, because you don't want us to pick the picture that it, it, are the best. You pick the pictures that you think are your two best. Uh, that just makes sense yeah. to me. It shouldn't be up to us to decide which picture is the best. So, so whatever we decide, like, um, all the details, including like how to submit your photos or video, uh, where to do it, what the deadline is actually i think i put the deadline already um up on the student area um but all that information will be gone it will go over it on sunday yeah um and you'll have basically until i think it's saturday night to submit your project so so this sunday the first class with the flowers to wear is the one that's distinctly different than the others because we'll be do, making multiples of things. We're making sort of like a collection of designs, you know, whether it's a cuff and then a hair to go with it and, and, and boutonniere or whatever, um, so that there's multiples. But so uh, Francoise and I be showing, uh, you know, quite a few things because they're small, small things, right? Um, for the other design, uh, uh, the other sessions, we're demonstrating two each pretty much, you know, from start to finish. I mean, there'll be some prep ahead of time because some of that prep part will be pre-taped for the tutorial so that you can see that real beginning, you know, the real mechanics as it was being created. And um, so two designs we'll do plus a third one that we'll show that's finished. So there'll be three designs in, from each of us. So you'll get total C6 designs in each one of the workshops. That's kind of the intent. So that gives you a fairly complete range um, of what you'll see in each other category. Great. Uh, and then Regina is also asking, do you, uh, do you give me the study material to refer and help my understanding because of language difference? So people that maybe uh, English isn't their first language. Um, I answer? think um, in many ways, um, I, I don't know that we can do other languages, but just ask a lot of questions that if you don't understand something, please yeah. don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, so all the demonstrations, all the review sessions, there will take questions yeah. throughout So if there's every parts single that you didn't quite understand, right? We're pretty patient with yeah. that, all of us. <laughs> and, um, and with yeah. the study material, there will actually be like, everybody will provide um, their botanical supply list of everything that yeah. they create. Which is a pretty um, universal language. Which will be available to the students. Yeah. So that we will be uh, providing during each session. Okay. okay. Any other? That's all the questions I have for now. If anybody has any other questions, now's the best time. Uh, I'll let them maybe just anything else you want to add. Um. I guess I want to just say that all of us, um, 
like each one of the workshop will have a designated Facebook group page. Uh, we're right. going to do it separately. That yeah, we had to do it separately because together. there's some people that are, you know, just registered for certain yeah. topics. So we couldn't just make one big one for Design for Excellence yeah. because so, I will be, it's, Facebook is also, the group is also a place where I'll be posting links to the demos um, and that kind of announcements and information. So we yeah, out each at the beginning of each month or like a couple weeks ahead of the session, we'll open the next, next one. Uh, Facebook group. Yeah. Because everybody will register through there, including the instructors, so that if there's any questions, we'll constantly be looking at that and answer, uh, provide answers. And I really feel like between the demo and then the tutorial and then that gap of time that they're designing, you know, if they have any questions, you know, like maybe they couldn't get something right and they're wondering, um, I think it's good to just take a picture and post it so we can look at it and we can help you. Uh, I, I think that's the best way for us to be able to communicate with you for problem solving, for instance, or just simply answering qu any and we'll questions. Have, Are you okay? Are yeah. you guys okay with this, Brenna, <laughs> Anya? Oh, yeah, Sue? we are here for you, absolutely. And I, I believe, yeah. like, all of them will be, like, members of each session's gr Facebook group. Yeah. So even though it's just Francoise and Hitomi uh, this month, Anya, Brenna, Sue are all there. members of the group as well. Yeah. So that can give you valuable feedback. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, the, you know, the community is kind of, it's all set up. There's us and then there's all of you. And some of you will get to see you four times, so it's going to be great. Uh, some of you, you know, we'll see you one time, but maybe we'll see you again another time. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be fun because we'll become very good friends because we would have had a lot of conversations, I'm sure. Uh, I wanted to add... Uh, uh, to this um, uh, language barrier thing that uh, possibly if somebody uh, has an issue, Google Translate is a very good um, app and any sentence you can take a photography of the sentence and it translates pretty, pretty good for somebody to understand. So, I mean, we'll be having some notes as well. So if anything is uh, there, it can be translated to the language. So maybe help with the understanding as well, you know, um, which is the fastest way That's to a good do. Idea. Um, in That's some way idea. so yeah. there is there are lots of different options techni yeah, technologically definitely. yeah and don't but don't hesitate to ask questions oh yes we're, we're here for you yeah mm -hmm. yes a uh, couple more questions um with time difference do you have opportunity to get critiques uh in recording yeah so i think yeah i answered this question to somebody that uh had emailed us and if it is a tough time for the review sessions you can still submit we'll they'll still critique your work and then also that's another reason why we have the facebook group so that you can get additional feedback, feedback uh, beyond the review session as well so there's a lot of ways to still get all the critical feedback and and critique that you're looking for i think you'll find that that you um, it's all it's all good friendly people and you mm. shouldn't be shy to share yep. your pictures and um, all sessions uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before like the demonstration the mentor sessions the review sessions everything's recorded in full and all the students have access to it indefinitely so it'll never expire your access to uh, these recordings. Yeah. If you miss any kind of submission because of, you know, something personal or some time issues or whatever, you can, you can send it to us later. We'll still review it. Uh, I, I will say that, you know, we'd like to, we are providing a certificate of completion, but in order to get the certificate of completion for the whole four, the series, you have to complete every assignment. That's the rule. <laughs> So uh, I, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Janet is asking, when did you say you would provide the supply list? Well, I mean, for this first class, uh, Francois already submitted <laughs> a list 
but I haven't. <laughs> so I'll be working on. Basically, I think what you'll get is probably the day of uh, on, the, on the day yeah. of because you would have seen it, and then that way you can check to see on the list what is what. Yeah. There's um, really no need for you to have your but your flowers and your supplies for Sunday. No, nor like you use it as a study guide to identify and to know the nomenclature because we will often talk maybe in common common names or but we'll also provide you a full genus species uh, that's also part of the study so that you can ID things so um, but you will get the complete list and um, yeah and supplies as well all the names of the product and you know where you can source it if you are not able to you know get it any other way I mean um, you, can, you might be able to still get it online and something like that you know you want to look at if, if there's something that you see on the list on Sunday that you can't get locally you probably still have time to get it maybe shipped possibly if it's not from China or other countries so mm -hmm. uh, yeah we'll be able to help you with sourcing certain things yeah too. this one unlike you know our last one with green talks with Gregor there the uh, students have a little bit more time to yes. complete their projects. Yes. So it's not as rush, rush, rush. I know that I can see Brenna smiling. So. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, okay. Uh, last question. Oh, a couple more questions. Sorry. Uh, Trish is asking, when are the deadlines to sign up if not already passed? And you can still sign up. You can right? still sign up. And actually, you know, like it's okay to say this right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i was gonna say it because we haven't been because um, some people thought oh maybe they might want to take a certain course but then they find that course being very interesting and that it, you know it's very informative and like the the system of learning so then they can upgrade to the full thing and that could be at any time because as you know uh the tape like you get the full class even if you are not in actual, in the live session, you get the whole class. So um, it is possible to join at any time. Actually. Yeah, we haven't been promoting it that way, but like if you are just signed up for Francoise's session and then you decide after it that you want to sign up for all, you'll be able to sign up at just the difference of cost. But it's a, it's a big saving. Yeah, like so you'll still be able to get all four for that uh, yeah. discounted price. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, Karen Kurtz is asking, just to confirm, each session with each designer is at the same time each week. That's not correct, right? Well, generally, it'll the, be similar. The actual demo lecture is at exactly the same time each week. Right. And as well as a student review on the following Sunday is the same time each week. But the mentoring sessions but the mentoring might session differ depends just on, on people's it's, schedule. It's generally Tuesday, Wednesday early in the week so that you get all the information to implement into your assignment in the last half of the week. Right. So you have time to gather things, additional things or whatever. Right. And, and by the way, you don't have to use exactly the same material that we use. I mean, you could just use, utilize the techniques, mechanics that we show you and you can use flower with anything you want. Right. I mean, it's not, you don't have to do a, a knockoff of what we create. <laughs> We prefer not. <laughs> and... Or even the color. It's just... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah the color. Yeah. You know, nice, something you different. can make it to what you love. I mean, make it, mm -hmm. make what you want, want to create. Just using some of the techniques and things that you learned. Which also will be a great experience because, you know, that's for the understanding of the principles and elements of design. You exactly. can say why you chose that color harmony or textures or you know, the, the line flower or foam flower. So that's going to be, um, you know, individual and fun exercise too. Yeah. And what we found in, in uh, student review is that there's another whole world and whole set of learning from what you create because each one of you create something different. And there's lesson to be learned with each design, you know, what's great about it or how it could be fixed. So that there, that's a whole lesson that to me, that review segment is almost as important as the lecture section because you see so many designs. So you enjoy it. And, yeah. 
Okay. And we enjoy it. Yeah, we <laughs> sure do. From the, from the previous, uh, you know, experiences, whenever you take classes, especially online, you have so many participants, uh, you always learn something new. It's so um, amazing how many different tricks, sometimes depending where we are located and uh, uh, on, on many subjects, just techniques and uh, current handling or anything basically of materials too so exactly. that's a fun part as well extra perk mm -hmm. i have to say that that real perk with virtual is that you get to see the designs up close like mm -hmm. the student review because in a real in-person classroom if you're in the back of the room and they're showing the design at the other end you never get to see what they're talking about mm -hmm. This one, the, the picture is right there for everybody to see front seat. When you get a, li a lot more comprehensive review too, because you yes. know the review session might be two hours long and you never go to a hands-on workshop and have two hours of review no. at the end of the yeah, day. No, that never happens. <laughs> so it, 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 there's a definite perk to the virtual for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Annalise Baldwin's asking for the flowers coming from Hawaii. Can we have them sent to Canada as well? Yes, <laughs> I can say yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we'll hook you up with uh, yeah. Greenpoint the yeah, point the right people. Yeah, <laughs> you can be, ship direct yeah. to you. So they can ship direct to you. It's it, it'll be fine. You'll you'll really enjoy it. All right, I think that's it. Okay, that sounds good. So I'll just put up the slide. Uh, one more time or uh, for the first time. So oh, if ju just before you do, any one of you there, Brenna, Anya, <laughs> Sue, last words? Well, it, no, I was going to go to this and then you can do last oh, words. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have last was, words. At the I was end. setting okay. you up That's for fine. the last word. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> this is my last words. Okay. <laughs> Your last words. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, if anybody watching hasn't registered yet uh more information registration can be found at designforexcellence.com right. and you can always uh email uh us uh via the um form on the website the contact form on the website if you have any further questions uh if you can't find what you're looking for on the website so yeah now i will turn it back to the four of you. <laughs> okay, good. So um, the other thing I want to mention is that Colin is always sort of the moderator. So in any of the sessions where there's chats in that, he will bring up the questions so that, uh, especially with the student review, that it's a constant flow talking back and forth. So that it's really, really a very friendly, very um, easy um, conversations. And I think you will also really love that feature about the virtual. Yeah, so what do you guys no think? No stress. <laughs> uh, yeah, no stress. That's right. Yeah. One day we'll we'll do a live stream with like zero hiccups. So yeah, we're, we're someday getting there. it'll be perfect. <laughs> it's the reality show. Anything can happen. Exactly. And we're just going with the flow. Going with the flow. That's how you know it's live, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yes, so I'm looking forward stage. to working with everybody. Uh, I think we have really, really a fantastic team. And I think you will all enjoy this experience. It really is one of the nicest thing about the virtual. I never thought I would be saying this because before we started, I just thought, no way. No way could it be as good as or. But the, you know what it is? It, I think it's as good as in person other than that, that real being together uh, aspect. But educationally, instructionally, I think it's actually better. I think there's a lot more extras. You get to see things, you get to, it's just the details are so much better. And so I'm really mm -hmm. excited that we get to be teaching this way um, because it's really a very joyful process yes. for us. Yeah, I think also with such a diverse group of people and different strengths and, you know, views, it's going to be really great. I mean, I'm so excited to be part of it and watch everyone else as well, because yeah. it's just a great experience as much as sharing whatever I can, um, you know. And uh, as you said, it's so spontaneous that also, you know, it just, it just, just things sometimes flow through your head and um, you just come, which maybe you didn't even think 
to start with, but um, you know, that's what it will be. It will be try yeah. to, to give as much as we can and um, help with uh, growing yeah. as we grow ourselves. That's right. Exactly. There's always that too. <laughs> okay. Great. I can't wait for all of these to happen and uh, be, we'll be seeing all these amazing, amazing work and amazing pictures of it, all the students' work. Really, that's always sort of the, the, the icing on the cake in the end is seeing the I results and seeing the confidence we being built. Yes. yes. I want to say we miss you, Francoise. As well yeah, today. <laughs> but we'll be seeing her on Sunday. She's the first yes. one, so it's going to be great. Uh, and I know everybody's going to just absolutely love that class. So let's just get, get things rolling yeah. this weekend, and we'll, yeah, we'll learn a lot, all of us yeah. and all of you. We'll see you so Sunday. thank you. Yeah. <laughs>